Hello and welcome to the Draw Along Club. In these videos we put up a series of poses on the screen and we draw them and we narrate the process. And if you like, you can get out your sketchbook and draw along with us. So this month we got these eight poses, three minutes each, uh, and we're doing the 12 line challenge, which is something that one of the people who watches our videos suggested in the comments uh, on YouTube. So it was to draw these figures in just 12 lines and a line can be a C curve, an S curve, or a curve a bit like a J, like a sort of straight line with a little curve at the end. And you can make the C curves very deep, almost curving all the way around to an oval. Uh, you can make them shallow. Um, and because we got three minutes and you're only gonna draw 12 lines, um, you know, you gotta take a lot of time over those lines, make some good observations and really consider where you want your lines to be. Oh, and before I forget, the reference photos are from the wonderful free resource Crocky Cafe. Check out their website and their YouTube channel. Um, okay, so this is the first pose. 12 lines only. Um, if you find this too hard, then, you know, maybe you could start with like 20 lines or something like that to ease into it. Yeah? Um, I... I must say, I thought this is a 12 letters rather than 12 rhymes. I mean, I can't... Uh... So this is where, because we've been arguing a little bit about this, <laughs> because um, you, my Mako, my mum, cheated on the last challenge, and no, then I now didn't. she's cheated. <laughs> and then she's cheated on... on the... But what do you mean? So it's it's... It could be a C curve or an no, S. J, but my, I, I love J, so my, my drawing was mostly made of J, 12 J mostly. Sometimes I used S, I think. I know, but but I, I the only th the, the thing is, is I can count more than 12 lines on your drawing, no, 12 Js. Tw look, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... Look, seven, look, eight, nine, ten time. already, and so if you add another three, then it... see, look at mine. <laughs> I've got. I actually, I'm, I'm on the right. So I put the number of the lines to make sure it was just twelve on the drawing. Um, I, I think I my drawing made of twelve letters. Okay. Yeah, because J. It's very, I mean, you can, you can write J in all kinds of... You can't, <laughs> you can't write, you can't write a J with like 20 different little uh, changes in angle and, and curves I and can't. undulations. It's not, I didn't mean like a calligraph, like a calligraphy J. I just mean a J, like a straight line with a little curve at the end. Oh, but I love a calligraphic today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, but the reason I loved this exercise, and I think this exercise teaches you tons. And yeah. Because you really have to choose. Oh, and, you know, this is the Christmas edition of the draw along. So we added, I just put some Santa hats on, but you added some funky drawings. You got a little present at the bottom there. <laughs> um so uh the this the, is your drawing is very nice simple and sophisticated mine is a more kind of prim primitive feel isn't see it? look this line here that you've got yeah yeah you're saying that that is one line it's a j <laughs> <laughs> yes it's a j that's not the essence of this exercise though it is. It, the essence of the exercise is to be bold enough to filter out the details, right? No. So if you draw a J in the most crazy J ever, that's just detail lines that you no, don't need. The purpose of exercise is how to cheat. <laughs> no, that's not true. It is. I mean, Guys, if you want to know about this exercise, watch the drawing on the right. <laughs> Right, that's just S curves, C curves, little J's or whatever, but it abides by the rules. But anyway, 
it's a great exercise, even if, you know, either way, because it pushes you to simplify um, oh, yeah. more I, than I you feel the, comfortable. I like this exercise. Yeah, it's like fun. you... Sorry, go on. A lot of fun. It's very fun, and it, it slows you down because you got three minutes to do 12 lines. And, mm. you know, if if, you, if you'd if you only take 90 seconds, then maybe just do it twice um, and making different choices about which lines to keep. But it really pushes you to filter, to filter down, uh, you know, the lines that you're using to take out all the details. Um, yeah. So I found it to be a really, really useful. I'm, I'm just going to close the window one sec. I just forgot to close the window. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I think it's a really, really powerful exercise. And I uh, actually... By the way, your, this drawing yours looks like um, Matisse cut out of, an, um, I think, a foldable Icarus or something. It's a beautiful... Okay, cool. Um, I'll have to look that one up because I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, we went to New York recently and a few other places. Ooh. And yeah, me and my my wife Lucy and our baby, and um, how was it? It was cool, and we got to see you know they've got the original Starry Night by Van Gogh there. Ah, oh. um, and that was really that's what, such a amazing painting. That was beautiful mm. to see that. Oh yeah, that's a and they had some beautiful. some Matisse there as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, I I would. I th I felt like this exercise changed my drawings. I like the d decorations you've got there. <laughs> it was like a punk rocker with a mohawk. Um, I uh, feel like this exercise changed my drawings almost instantly. Like after I did it, mm. I was simplifying f more than I used to, which is a good thing. I mean... I think that learning to draw is so much about learning to simplify. So exercises that push you to simplify are yeah. really powerful, you know. But, but my case is a bit different because after this exercise, I went to regular drawing class and uh, I took a bit of time to get back my usual kind of rhythm because because of this is so different from what I'm doing normally, um, I, I think I'm, my system a bit confused and uh, yeah, <laughs> it was a very weird feeling. Well, one thing we should talk about is how, you remember how you were in a drawing slump? Mm. You've definitely broken out of that now. Um, right? I hope you've done so. some. You've done some really good past i mean you can see them up on instagram a couple of them but recently the pastel drawings you've been doing and there's a lot more than we only post some stuff on instagram when we have time but there's some really nice drawings that you've done at life drawing with with pastels recently oh thank you yeah. uh, there is up and down though you said i mean it's a not so constant yeah mm. no it's always like that right it's always mm. up and down but i'm just saying that you know, if you come out of a session with like one really nice drawing, I think that's pretty good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. But sometimes nothing comes out. <laughs> that's, that's Do you know what? Done. I I just I I know you did uh, the this exercise is in a good way, mm. but I would say you could do it again, actually, with only really really simple mm. J's and C's and S's. Because then you have to simplify even more than you are. Yeah. I think it, your drawing is the, 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 the purpose of this exercise, isn't it? Sorry. No, no it's, I, it's not. It's fine. Like any, The way that you're doing it is going to teach you something. So that's great. It doesn't make any difference. But it's also probably worth doing it even more simple. Like filtering yeah. and editing even more to try yeah. and find even simpler lines and still explaining the pose. And then you kind of have to leave out lines. You can't do the whole outline. 
Mm-hmm. So you've got to be very selective. Yeah, that's right. true. But even this one, for me, is very, very much simpler than my yeah. normal things. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah I, and, uh, I did enjoy it. Yeah, I enjoyed it too. And, and you know what? One thing that's really cool is... Uh, so I've been reading this book by someone um, called Steve Houston. Mm-hmm. And uh or Huston, I don't know how you pronounce that, sorry. But um, you know, he kind of simplifies everything down into, you know, you're either looking in you're either working on structure or you're working on gesture, or what we sometimes refer to as movement on this channel. Um and and I like how simple that is as a way of thinking about things. Yeah. And gesture being the, more about the relationship between parts of the body. It's like a rhythm uh, or a flow, but it's a relationship between parts. And uh, the thing that's cool about this exercise is if you're going to only use 12 lines, you won't really, you can't really just be like, okay, this line is for the collarbone and then this line is for the chest Mm -hmm. you know you need to use one line to you know if you can see that flow in that line you might use one line all the way from the neck uh you know down to the knee or something like that if you so other than body shape you're drawing a kind of a movement yeah yes you're drawing Uh, any kind of flow you're rhythm. right. I think I'm still. I was still following the uh, uh, body, actual body shape. That's why um, much more uh, um, complicated than yours. I think. Right, and it's still good because you're still being selective about which lines you want to use. Mm. But if, as an exercise, if if you're a beginner, for example, and you're struggling with gesture drawing. If you do this and you really think about the lines and you're very selective, you might be forced to see a big... I mean, the current drawings are not great examples of this, but maybe in the next one. Big lines that connect, that flow from, you know, from one part of the body to another, not structurally, but just, Mm -hmm. you know, in terms of what you're seeing visually. I think that I just... A few days ago, I went to an exhibition called Oceania um, in uh, London. In London, uh, it, because it was just closing, I, I went in the early last minutes uh, before exhibition was closed, uh, and uh, I was very impressed because there is absolute. Okay, uh, simplicity and um, expression come together the very powerful mm. uh, but uh, very different from Western um, understanding of body. It's not representative but the more I don't know, it's very uh, um, powerful uh, and uh, yeah, that simplicity is uh, beyond uh, so-called academic uh, drawing. More, right. But the simplicity doesn't mean anything mechanical. It's uh, based on uh, life and uh, observation, I mean, uh, hunting, fishing, all that stuff. Um, and uh, just to keep, I was very impressed. So uh, this exercise somehow related to that kind of a simplicity. Right. Yeah. I. I. I I've. The more, you know, the more I draw and and learn and understand, the more I feel that, you know, the key is that ability to simplify even if you are aiming to end up with something really detailed Mm. 
at, at the beginning, if you can simplify, then you can design your drawing. Yeah, you know, simple... it's a se- um, selection, um, process of selection, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, selection. I mean, um, um, what so, to what to discard, what to keep on the um because um I think you succeeded. I I'm still <laughs> reluctant to discard a uh, detail, I think. Yeah. Um and so just to point out that the Christmas decoration bits don't count towards the twelve lines. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> um and yeah, if this is a good example, this this pose of one that really lends itself to this. So, like, if you look, for example, from, you know, on the outline on the left side of the photo, at her waist, uh, at her hip, you know, you could you could simplify that all the way down to her toe, so her, mm-hmm. her left little toe into one curve, right? I mean, I know there's little details and bumps, but do they really matter? Not really. So you can just filter all that out. And you have to, because you've only got 12 lines. And then Mm. around her bum, you can simplify that into just an S curve. And I know it's, uh, sorry, a big C curve kind of wrapping around that, just to give that shape. And you don't need that much more than that. Her spine can just be an S curve. Her hair can be a big C curve around over the top. You know, all these things, there's so much detail, it can be overwhelming. But when you can simplify it down into just what really matters, it's a good way to start your drawing. And it mm. actually, weirdly, it helps with accuracy. Because if you can simplify into important elements, All you have to do is get, you know, it's easy to put down a few lines at the start of the drawing and get a lot of the pose in. And then you can make fix those and get those right. Whereas if you get into a lot of detail early and it's in the wrong place or whatever, or the relationship is wrong to the next bit that you draw, it's hard to fix that and it's hard to see the big picture. Yeah. Um, By the way, I'm... I'm at this stage, I wrote, I drew only 2J. You see <laughs> that? <laughs> now, third J. You mean in the whole drawing? Yeah. This is a 3J, made of a 3J. I think we've established that you so are just... Four? This is, you're just totally, you're using like a hundred lines. No, I can five see J. fifty J's. <laughs> <laughs> five J, I'm counting. In this one, I um, had to erase uh, some lines because I wanted to change. I don't know if that should be. I mean, it's that's not- a cheat. That's nothing compared to <laughs> your cheating, but I think that's okay. I think it's more about being selective and editing. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 I, I think it is a. It's a really useful too because I know some people say oh you shouldn't use Eraser. I really love Eraser because Eraser is not just a tool of correction but uh, you can use the drawing tool isn't it? Yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's true. I I think another good um, lesson this, this teaches you is to slow down. Mm. So I think people, when oh, they've yeah. got three minutes, they start rushing and trying to put as much in as possible. Whereas when you know you've got 12 lines, you're not worrying about time. You're just worrying about which line to use. And then that means that you take mo- more time to observe. And that's really a good habit to get into. So yeah, not to and panic when you, about lines. When you draw continuous lines slowly, it, you get the um, feel different from more kind of a nervous, meticulous stroke, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, anyway, I do. I really like the drawings that you, you're doing. They're very cool. It's a, I can't. I, I can't. It's a, definitely twelve letters. <laughs> I'm not cheating. Um, do you know what I think? 
uh, you guys watching, you know, given the rules that we laid out at the beginning, uh, you you let us know if you think that she's cheated, <laughs> and we'll let YouTube decide. Well, honestly, I think a drawing is a um, skill of a cheat. I think. Yeah, maybe sometimes, right? Like you want to. No, fundamentally so because it's two D and you want to. You want to. We, we are making a, something. I mean, out of three D into two D, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Not a big cheat. But that's not the same as you know. This exercise <laughs> is is about this pushing, pushing, pushing to simplify. You know, um. Uh, it's the same with um, landscapes. When you go out and you're trying to learn to paint landscapes, which is something that I'm still a beginner at, but just figuring out, you need to be able to simplify everything into a a, a statement of value, like of light and dark. Uh -huh. Really simple shapes of uh, design your overall shapes of light and dark. And if you can do that, you can add lots of different color and nuance and detail, or you can keep it really loose. But either way, you're going to start with that massive simplification. And then one thing that when you start to analyze your favorite artist's artwork, you start to realize that a lot of it, even if it looks complex, even if it looks detailed, it can be distilled into something very simple and, and straightforward. Yeah, and the contrast makes sense in terms of composition, isn't that? Yeah. Um, one thing we often get asked is about the materials that we're using. And so what material are you using? I'm using a very chunky wax crayon. I think it's a Karandash. Uh, chunky one. It's, I think Neo... Neo art or something. It's a, it's a lovely uh, wax crayon and a lovely color. I like it, but it's very, very uh, um, big crayon. So I just uh, made a bit of a point um, um, to make a, a more manageable because uh, otherwise it's too chunky. Right. Uh, How about you? I'm using my favorite pencil, the Wolf's Carbon, which I've just bought uh, like 40 of them. Um, 40? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well done. Just so I don't <laughs> run out. Um, and um, But, you know, one thing that I do want to say about materials is before I used to be like, oh, I wish I drew better, and then thinking maybe it's about the materials. Like maybe I should do this material or that material. And... Uh, you know, materials do make a difference, but at the end of the day, nothing's going to replace lots and lots of practice. And, yeah. and the focus has to be less on what you're using to draw and more on uh, the, the the practice that you're doing, the exercises, how you're developing and rounding out your skills. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. on the other hand, because uh, the, in order to draw... And you, I think you deserve to use your something that, uh, comfortable with, and uh, yeah. I think it was searching what is what is your um, material. That's I mean, true. some people um, yeah. some people make a beautiful drawing with graphite. Other people find the graphite is a bit too grey or shining. I mean, you know. Um, so I think God, what you said is absolutely true. You you could draw whatever available, but on the other hand, um, there is a good reason to search what you really like, love. Yeah. But, um, this is a tough pose to do in 12 lines because obviously there's a lot going on in the figure, but also the pose itself. There's a yeah. the, all the ele the elements don't flow into each other that well, like the arms and the legs. They're all mm. different angles, and so to figure out just twelve lines that gets all these different things happening is tough. Very um, energetic, dynamic pose, isn't that? 
Yeah, it's it's kind of all over the place. Um, before I forget, uh, I announced this on the newsletter a while ago, but um, it very excitingly we have uh, an event coming up, a sort of online month of figure drawing, uh, which we're calling Figuary. And we're doing that together with Crocky Cafe. And it's mm. going to be in February 2019. And what's going to happen is they're going to put up a video with poses every single day. Uh, a, a, a quick poses as they usually do, really good quality as they always do. And we're going to put out a video every day of that month as well. And our video is going to be about developing a good drawing habit uh, of some sort. Like we're going to try and find some really useful and doable things, techniques or things that you can look for in your drawings that you can start to make a habit while you're drawing. Uh, so just as an example, uh, we talked about we'll, we'll look at um, the angles and the lines that you can look for in the figure and doing justice to those angles, like not reducing them, not shying away from them, but really going for it with those angles. And so we're going to be producing a short video every day to go along with their video. Um, and the idea is that you'll be able to build up a consistent practice habit with some with using their videos, but then also uh, some good drawing habits with our quick videos. So I think it's going to make a big difference to just uh, to to do f the whole set of figurary drawings. Um, and yeah, afterwards... sounds sounds great. Yeah, I, really I think look it's, forward to it. it's gonna yeah. be really powerful for people learning to draw figures. So I'll talk more yeah. about that in a future video. Uh, but for now, guys, try out the twelve line challenge and thank oh, you. Oh, twelve burritos. Yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much for watching. Thank you very much.